canonical models. It's so as domain-driven design. It's essentially, the mistake that a lot of organizations make um, when they create SO or web services, they create, the XML models are bottom-up XML models. They're really something that was created in the Java program and then transformed to XML. Uh, some of the upfront thinking that needs to go into creating your SOA is consolidation of messaging. Sim since it's a single approach on how data is represented in your enterprise as a standard XML model, because uh, let's face it, most of the SOA implementations have XML as the data transformation, uh, data tra uh, kind of transport. Um, we need to have a single kind of model per domain, as I talked about, uh, about service domain, single model per service domain, single XML model, for instance. Uh, and that moves us towards standardization. Again, a lot of organizations make a mistake of kind of creating their own or doing a, a separate model uh, per service, for instance, right? Because they're doing a lot of bottom-up uh, XML. Uh, but our tendency is to look at the industry. You know, and the reason being, industry has a lot of these committees that create standard XML models, that's uh, representations of data. And chances are your enterprise is not unique in most aspects, such as uh, back office, HR, you know, other domains other than product, for instance, other than what the organization sells. So you want to look towards industry standards first and really reuse what's out there. For instance, there are standards such as OAGIS BODs, XBRL, HR, XML, FPML. You want to piggyback on those and, you know, kind of create use what's, what's out there, and if you do have special needs, augment those. And that's why I have the last point, is really participation in industry, industry standard committees. You want your organization to also drive those standards. And that makes it uh, maintainable, reduces the workload, because you don't want your organization to maintain these models. And again, this is something that needs to be done up front, some upfront thinking, before getting, you know, kind of so a full-blown implementation, because it's very difficult to kind of reverse course once you already have this point-to-point, -point, you know, services created. Um, so standard representation of data is key, needs to go um, up front, and, you know, again, some thought needs to be given as to which models you want to use for each domain. Again, not looking to cover your whole organization with one XML model, but really pick ones for uh, each domain. Uh, portals, and this is an important piece because SOA has given so much on the back end to the business community and everything else, but the business doesn't see really, uh, doesn't see the result. And that's why it's important to implement some kind of a front end to your SOA early on to make it touchable to your business stakeholders, right? It's, it's very, very important uh, because you want to show your results, especially in today's economy. You want to make sure that you're producing results, uh, results early on. And this is the way end users really perceive your, your SOA implementation, right? They, um, they really need to touch it, they need to understand what data is becoming available to them, and it shows results early. Um, so portals present, you know, portals out of the box represent your platform, so service-oriented business applications, where most of the stuff happens in the services, and your really portal just becomes a very thin layer that displays the services. And, you know, the reason why portal is a good fit for SOA is because it leveraged SOA concept from the beginning. Uh, most of them can consume web services out of the box, they have portlets, and some of the products examples are, for instance, JBoss Portal, uh, Open Standards LifeRay, and IBM WebSphere Portal. Um, well, putting it all together, right, this is how, you know, this is what ideally the enterprise will look like. You see this uh, deployment. You can have some services reside within the enterprise service bus. Some of them will reside within your legacy application. Uh, but this is really how things look maybe from a high-level deployment perspective. Uh, well. Okay, so with, with that said, I'm gonna wrap up. I'm gonna just give you an overview of uh, Freedom OSS, um, what, what we do. We're a professional services organization uh, with a focus on practical SOA implementation. We call, you know, the space is called practical service-oriented architecture. Uh, we're an international firm, offices in uh, United States and uh, Eastern Europe. We're a 2008 JBoss SO Innovation Award winner, uh, 0708 Practical SO Award winner, and Red Hat Extensive Ecosystem Award winner. Uh, work with a lot of Fortune 1000 companies, and we're privately held. And really, our pitch towards Practical SO, why do we bring that, you know, that value, why you should work with us, uh, you know, if you are looking at SO implementations, is because we really take a very practical approach.